Good morning students. Today in this video we are going to discuss about the coordination in life processes. So control and coordination is a separate chapter. In control and coordination we see that how the brain control the different organ systems. But here coordination in life processes, there are different life processes which we are studying like digestion, respiration and all. These life processes are coordinated. In this particular video, we are going to see that how the life processes are coordinated with the help of considering one life process that is the digestion. So a digestion, how different things are coordinated, what kind of hormones are helping in the different uh, steps of digestion. That is what we are going to see and we have picked up some important topics and we will discuss them in the form of questions. I will give you this question, I will give you some questions and we will try to find answer for the question. And if you want to see the topics of other chapters, you can find the link in the description and this full lesson explanation is also there in the channel. That link also you can find in the description, you can watch the full lesson explanation. So for now we have some important topics discussed in this particular video, right. So let us begin with the first question. Which hormone is secreted to suppress the hunger? So the hunger is controlled, hunger is controlled by hormones in our digestive system. It is under the control of hormones. One particular hormone, it creates the hunger pangs. So you feel the pain, craving for food when you are hungry. What makes you feel like that? There is a hormone. So that particular hormone makes you feel hungry. Once you take the food, if the food is taken, if you are satiated and you feel you get the feeling of fullness because of another hormone right so the question is what is that hormone that suppress the hunger so once we eat our hunger has to be suppressed otherwise it leads to overeating right so the hormone that causes the hunger pangs is ghrelin ghrelin is a hormone which causes the hunger pangs once the food is taken the hunger has to be suppressed that is achieved by another hormone called as leptin. Leptin is the hormone that suppress the hunger. So the answer is leptin. Let's see in the next question, which type of muscles are found in the outer layer of esophagus? So esophagus is the pipe that connects the mouth to the stomach. But it is not just like a hollow pipe that we see in our houses for the water drainage. So the food it will, whatever the food that we are swallowing, it is not just dropped into a hollow tube. The food is not passing down into the esophagus that is due to gravity. It is not because of the gravity. The food, it will not directly fall in the stomach. The food, it passes in the esophagus by some rhythmic contractions and relaxations. What relaxes and what contracts the muscles in the esophagus? So the muscles in the esophagus, they contract and relax in a particular fashion to make the food move in the esophagus. The food is very soft, we call it as a bolus. When the food is chewed well in the mouth, it becomes a soft paste called as bolus. So this bolus, it moves in the esophagus. How it moves? We can explain it with an example that you have taken a potato and applied some oil and you inserted the potato in a rubber tube some old cycle tube and you are pushing the potato. So the potato it moves in the tube. Now observe the shape of the tube how it changes. As the potato is proceeding further then you see that the place where the potato is there, there you can see it is expanded and just behind the potato that is contracted. The pipe is contracted. In the same way in the similar fashion the food in the esophagus moves forward that is due to the contraction and relaxation of muscles and there are two types of muscles. The esophagus has muscles in two layers. The outer layer has got one type of muscles and the inner layer has got another kind of muscles. The question is what kind of muscles are present in the outer layer? The outer layer of esophagus is made up of longitudinal muscles. The inner layer of esophagus is made up of circular muscles. 
So here initially what happens is that the outer layer, the longitudinal muscles contract. As the longitudinal muscles contract, the tube becomes a little short. So the foot is moved far, forward. Then the circular muscles, they contract. The circular muscles which are behind the foot, they contract and push the ball is still forward. So this contraction and relaxation, it continues from one point to the other point, moving the foot forward. So these movements, they happen like wave-like motions, wave-like movements. These kind of wave-like movements that are created in the esophagus by the longitudinal and circular muscles is called as peristaltic movements. These movements, they have a special name called peristaltic movements. So due to these peristaltic movements, the foot is moved forward, right? So the esophagus, it has got longitudinal muscles in the outer layer. Let's see the next question. Now let's see the next question. Name the sphincter present between the stomach and duodenum. So in the stomach, the food is partially digested. We know that digestion begins in the uh, mouth and then it goes to the stomach. So in the stomach, the food is digested. Some part of the food is digested. The food is not di completely digested in the stomach. A part of food is digested. So this partially digested food, it is churned well in the stomach and it is made into a semi-solid paste kind of thing called as chyme. chyme. So this chyme, it has to go into the small intestine for complete digestion. The beginning of the small intestine is called duodenum. So the stomach is connected to duodenum. The stomach is connected to duodenum. But whatever the chyme is formed in the stomach, all the chyme at a time it cannot enter into the duodenum. The food, the chyme from the small, from the stomach, it is slowly released into the duodenum, part by part, part by part. Not at a single time. So it is the movement of chyme from the stomach to duodenum is controlled. How it is controlled? Who is controlling? There is a special muscle between the duodenum and the stomach that is it's controlling. That particular muscle, special muscle is called as a sphincter. It has got a name. What is that name? That is the question. The question is what is the sphincter muscle present between the duodenum and the stomach? The answer is pyloric sphincter. So pyloric sphincter is that a muscular sphincter controls the movement of chyme from the stomach to small intestine. Let's see the next question. Name the hormones that are secreted into the small intestine so that the process of digestion, it is done with the help of enzymes. We know that enzymes are very essential for the process of digestion. But what is the role of hormones? Hormones also play an important role in the process of digestion. So, the release of enzymes is coordinated by the hormones. What are those hormones that are secreted into the small intestine? There are two hormones, important hormones that are secreted into the small intestine. They are the secretin and cholecystokinin. Secretin and cholecystokinin, these are the two hormones that are secreted into the small intestine. So these hormones, they activate the process of digestion in the small intestine. By activating the release of enzymes in the small intestine. So the walls of the small intestine, they have to release the enzymes for the process of digestion. At the same time, the pancreas has to produce the pancreatic juice and liver has to secrete the bile and other juices. So all these are activated by these hormones. So the digestive juice from the liver, the digestive juice from the pancreas and the digestive juice from the walls of intestine, they contain enough enzymes to digest the food and make the process of digestion complete. So what are the two hormones that help in the process of digestion? Secretin and cholecystokinin. Let's see the next question. What are the finger like projections in the small intestine are called as? So that if you see the inner wall of small intestine, the inner wall, there are some finger like projections. So what are they called as? Actually, why this small intestine has got finger like projections? Why it is not having a flat surface? We know that 
the process of digestion gets completed in the small intestine. So food is completely digested. So one work is done. What is the second function? After digestion, there are lots and lots of nutrients in the small intestine. So all these nutrients are to be absorbed in the blood. That is the purpose of nutrition. So these nutrients are to be absorbed into the blood. Then they are supplied to different parts of the body. Different cells are supplied with the nutrients by the blood circulatory system. So absorption is also an important function of the small intestine. Completing the digestion is one part and absorption of nutrients is the second part. So for this absorption, it needs a very large surface area. If there is more surface area, there is more absorption. But here in the small intestine, it is very narrow. The diameter is very less. So if the surface, the inner lining of the small intestine is flat, these nutrients just they pass away. They pass into the large intestine. As they are moving, more nutrients are not absorbed if the inner surface is flat. So what happens? More surface area has to be provided. So it is done by these finger-like projections. Instead of a flat surface, the surface is having ups and downs which form the finger-like projections. So if these finger-like projections, they have got more surface area. So there is more amount of nutrients are absorbed. So that is the function of this finger like projections. So these finger like projections, they have got so many blood vessels and lymph vessels for the absorption and transport of nutrients. So here the question is, what is the name of that finger like projections? The name is villi. So villi are the finger like projections that are present in the inner lining of the small intestine that help in the process of absorption. Let's see the next question in our dental formula 3, 2, 1, 2. In that formula, 1 represents what kind of teeth? So actually what is this number 3, 2, 1, 2? It denotes the number of teeth that we have. So we know that we have 32. That is the number of teeth we have in our mouth. So it is denoted by a formula 3, 2, 1, 2. So how uh, it goes like? See. Our mouth, it is divided to two parts, upper jaw, lower jaw. Each jaw has got 16 teeth and each jaw you can separate left and right. So if we take upper jaw, it has got 16 teeth and we divide into two, left side and right side. Because we will be having the similar pattern in left and right side. The same pattern is followed. So we are taking that one fourth part of our total teeth. So if we are taking that upper jaw, some right side. So there we find three one kind of teeth two another kind one another kind and two another kind so four different type of teeth are present so the one the number one represents which type of teeth that is the question so let us come from the first one three if we see the dental pattern so at the back we have three molars molars are the strong stout teeth that help in the process of grinding so the food is ground so well so soft with the help of molars so the number three represents molars and if you see number two premolars what is the use of these premolars if you are going to uh, bite something crack something crack a nut which is very hard so that is done by the premolars so the next number one, it represents canine. Canine are the teeth. They have a pointed edge that help in tearing the flesh. Usually animals which eat flesh, carnivorous animals, they have sharp canines which are very sharp, strong and moreover they are lengthy compared to other teeth. If you observe the dental pattern of animals like lion, tiger, dogs, wolves, they have very sharp and strong canine teeth. So here the one represents the canine and what does this two represents? Two represents the incisors. Incisors are the front flat teeth that help in cutting the food. And we cut the food, the soft food with the help of incisor. If the food is hard, we uh, crack it with our premolars and grind it with the molars and tear it with the canines. So that is the different kind of teeth that we have in our mouth and here the number one represents canine. Let's see the next question. Name the scientist who proved that 
the thought of food triggers the production of saliva so the thought of food we know that if we see the food if we smell the food it makes us produce saliva watering of mouth takes place see somebody likes ice cream just by seeing the ice cream then their mouth waters in the same way somebody uh, likes uh, food like biryani so when they smell that when they get the flavor of biryani then it leads to salivation saliva is produced in their mouth so this is just our sense organs make it happen but just by the thought just you are uh, uh, thinking that in your mind that imagination also can produce saliva so on this particular aspect one particular scientist conducted experiments with dogs he conducted experiments salivation in dogs production of saliva in dogs so who is that scientist so if you know the answer please write it in the comment section right so this is all about the coordination in life processes if you want the full lesson explanation you can watch the full lesson by clicking the link in the description and if you like the video please like it and share it with your friends and for the other chapters also important topics are discussed please get click the links in the description thank you